Good morning, today's lesson is 6.1. Today we're gonna to do equivalent fractions. Our essential question, how can you use models to show equivalent fractions? Let's investigate. Joe cut a pan of lasagna into, into third slice pieces. He kept one third and he gave the rest away. Joe will not eat his part all at once. How can he cut his part into smaller equal size pieces? Draw a model to show how Joe could cut his part of lasagna into two equal pieces. So if I look at the model, they cut the piece of lasagna into one, two, three parts. And then remember this one third, because it's it was one third. This one right here is going to be Joe's part, and he wants to cut his in half. So I'm going to draw a line right here in half. And it says you can rename these two equal pieces as a fraction of the original lasagna. So suppose that he had cut the original pan into equal pieces of this size. How many pieces would there be? Well, if he did that all the way through, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. And then it says, what fraction of the panel is one piece? Well, that would be one. And since there are six pieces, it would be one six. What fraction of the, of the pan is two pieces? Well, that would be two six, right? Because you're going to have two pieces of the six. So you can rename one third as two six. Next, it says, now draw on the model to show how Joe could cut his part of the lasagna into four equal pieces. So I'm going to break this apart. So there's one, two, so if you see, I want, I kind of broke it up. So there's two lines in this one, two lines in that one, two in that one, two in that one. So now I have four equal parts. One, two, three, four equal parts. So you can rename these four equal pieces as a fraction of the original lasagna. So suppose that he had cut the original pan into equal pieces of this size. So that means he would have kind of gone all the way across. Okay. So how many pieces would there be? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there would be twelve pieces. And then it says what fraction would be one piece? So one piece would be one twelfth. And then it says what fraction is four of the pieces? So that's these right here. So it would be one, two, three, four. And remember the whole was broken into 12, so four twelfths. So you can rename one third as four twelfths, right? Because this right here is one third, but it's also four twelfths. Fraction the name, fractions the name, fractions that name the same amount are called equivalent fractions. So write the equivalent fractions. Well, we had three of them. We did one third. We broke it down into two sixths. And then we also made it four twelfths. Those are all equivalent fractions. It's going to come into play very important here in the future. Draw conclusions. Compare the models for one third and two sixths. How does the number of parts relate to the size of the parts? Well, the model for two sixths has twice as many equal parts as the model for one third. And the parts are also half the size. Number two, describe how the numerators are related and how the denominators are related in one-third and two-sixth. So a whole divided into sixth has two times as many parts as a whole divided into thirds. So the numerator and denominator, so the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom, in two-thirds are each twice the numerator and denominator as they are in, I'm sorry, in two-sixths as they are in two-thirds. It should actually be one-third. Sorry about that. Let me fix that. So in one third, so two sixths, one third. You can see that this is twice the number, and that is also twice the number, right? Two times one is two, and two times three is six. Think, does one third equal three ninths? Explain. So yes, a fraction with nine in the denominator has three times as many equal parts as a fraction with three in the denominator. So, for example, 1 times 3, so if I look up here at the top, this 1, why is it writing? There we go. 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9, right? So, 1 third and 1 ninth is going to be equivalent. 
Let's make some connections. Savannah has two-thirds yard of ribbon, and Isabel has three-eighths yard of ribbon. How can you determine whether Savannah and Isabel have the same length of ribbon? So there's the equal signs, the equal, right? And not equal signs, which is um, the equal sign with a slash. And we can show whether the fractions are equivalent. So let's tell whether, and so that just means if I have two fractions, so like, for example, on one-third equals one-ninth, I had the equal sign, but if they didn't, so like let's say this was one fifth here, that's not equal. So I would put the little line there to show that that's not equal. Okay, so if I'm trying to tell whether two fourths and three eighths are equal, I'm in order to write these two signs, I'm gonna first shade the amount of ribbon that Savannah has. So Savannah has two fourths. So here's the two fourths line, because I took this one, two, three, four, four fourths. So I need to shade two fourths. Then I need to shade the amount of ribbon that Isabella have, has, and hers is in eighths. So I took the same thing and I made eight parts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So right here is where the two fourths is, okay? So I'm just drawing the line straight down because it's the same thing. But Isabella has three eighths. So she has one, two, three eighths. So two-fourths and three-eighths, look, it doesn't, this one goes all the way to the line. This one only goes to there. So it is not equal. So you're going to draw the not equal sign. So in this one, they want us to write a model that's equivalent, okay? So, for example, this one is one-fifth. There's one, two, three, four, five parts, and they shaded one of them. So we need to write... An equivalent fraction so we're gonna they've still shaded one of them but just like in the other one I'm gonna cut it all the way across in half so now instead of having fifths I'm gonna have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten parts and in the ten parts two of them are shaded one two right so two fifths or two tenths and one fifth are equivalent now, in this next one, they have it broken into thirds. See? One, two, three. These are thirds. And of the thirds, two of them are shaded, right? So now, I'm going to break this other one apart, and I'm going to try and do a different one. So let's try and do, let's break it apart like this. So I cut basically the thirds into thirds. So now how many parts do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Whoops. So I have 9 parts now. And of the 9 parts, how many are shaded? So you can see the blue shaded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this 6 ninths is equivalent to 2 thirds. So in this next segment, you're just going to tell me whether it's equivalent with a equal sign or not equivalent with a not equivalent sign. Um, I'm going to have fraction tiles if, if you want to use those or you can use the graphic paper to kind of draw them out if you want. But if I'm looking, uh, 1 times 2 is 2, right? And 6 times 2 is 12. So this is equivalent. You can also use your multiplication facts. Or again, you can lay out the fraction tiles if you want. I'm going to do this next one too. So 5 times 2 is 10, although this is all 2, so it just doesn't always have to be a 2. But 2 times 5 is not, yeah, 6. This is not equivalent. You can't make, so if I have my um, little fraction chart and I've got it broken into 5 pieces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I shade just 2 of them, right? I can't cut that in half and then shade just six. And if I shade just six of those, one, I'm going to overlap, two, three, four, five, six. Now see, that's, that's not equivalent. So drawing it out might be helpful. Um, if you do want to use the fraction tiles, I know you might have used those in third grade. You're welcome to. I'm going to have you do problem five, six, seven, and eight. And in the Google form, I'm gonna, I don't have the equal or the not equivalent sign, so I'm actually going to have you write equivalent in the Google form, or I'm going to have you write not 
equivalent in the Google form. Um, and then it'll self-check so you'll know if you got the right answer. I will also have you do Think Central when you're done. All right? If you leave me, I will be on the carpet. Good luck.